Welcome back everyone. So today I've created this gold smoky look. The party season is upon us and my birthday is next week so I was in the mood for creating something classy and eye catching. So I'm going to start with the eyes before I do the skin and the palette I'm going to be using is the new gold palette by Natasha Denona. I'm using this because it was gifted to me, it's not a sponsored tutorial and there are plenty of other brands that offer gold eyeshadow so you can definitely recreate this with any brand that you want. The first colour I'm going to be using is called Aria. This is a creamy matte finish and it's a warm brown. So we're not going to be taking this colour onto the mobile lid which is the part that moves. Instead we're going to be running this through the socket but concentrating the majority of that colour on the outer V shape. We're going to wing it out slightly to make sure that when you create your wing you're giving it a little bit of lift as this will lift the eye. If you take the colour downwards slightly it's going to give you more of a droopy appearance to your eye. The best way to work out the right shape for your own eye is to follow the direction of your lower lid so it goes up at an angle and just follow that as if it was an invisible line. That way you're not under or overestimating where your line should be. Once I've laid down that base layer I'm going in with a fluffy blending brush. This one is one of my favourites, it's a duo fibre brush by MAC and I'm working that in circular motions over the entire eyeshadow until it looks completely blended then we're going to reapply. This time I'm using a slightly bigger brush, it's a bit more fluffy. The reason I've switched brushes is because the first one allowed me to be a bit more precise about where I applied it, it was slightly smaller and a bit more dense. This one's fluffy so it's just going to dust the colour over that entire area, meaning we get a bit more of a build up on the area that we've already got eyeshadow and a slight colour payoff on the surrounding areas. Then once again going in with a final blend using my duo fibre brush. Going back to the palette, I'm taking the shade Varis and this is a warm brown and it's a metallic finish. I'm going back to my base shadow brush by Real Techniques and I'm using a patting motion to apply this to the mobile lid. So this is that little part of the lid that moves and I'm concentrating this colour on the outer half of the lid and then using my smaller blending brush over the seams. These shadows are so creamy, they blend like an absolute dream. I'm also taking a small amount of Varis on the inner corner of the eye above the socket but I'm also going to take that onto the inner corner of the eye as well. Taking it above that socket area is kind of sinking it slightly because it is dark but having a metallic finish to it is going to catch the light and give it a really beautiful glow over the entire lid. Next I'm taking this warm coppery gold named Carver and I'm using my finger to press this onto the skin. It's got more of a sparkly finish to it and it definitely works better when you use your finger to press it onto the lid. By the way, I'm actually following one of Natasha Denona's looks for this tutorial. I'm now taking this dark brown coffee pencil by MAC and I'm going to run this along the entire lash line really close to the root. Once again, you can use an alternative product. It doesn't have to be a MAC pencil. Any matte brown pencil that gives a really nice payoff will do. As we're going to blend it, we don't want anything too hard, so look for a pencil that's got a bit of a soft finish to it and it helps to run this along the lid if you keep the skin taut on one side. I'm now going in with this small smudger brush by Sigma and I'm using the very tip of it to smudge along the pencil which is going to give it a bit of a softer finish. We're going to do this before we go in with an eyeshadow over the top. But before we do that, I'm taking the same pencil along my waterline. I'm also going to run that close between the root of the bottom lashes. We don't want any of the skin really peering through before we go in with eyeshadow along this area. To start smudging out my pencil, I'm going to take the shade Log. This is a creamy matte finish and it's a warm brown, a lot deeper than the shade Aria that we've already applied. Again, I'm using my small smudger brush to apply this because it's got a very tiny tip which allows me to be a lot more precise. I'm going to start to build up the outer V shape with the colour Log and then as I apply one layer, I then go back in with my base shadow brush and a small amount of Varis and pressing that over the top to create a nice blend. Notice how I'm not blending the colour outwards. I'm keeping it in the position that I'm applying it but tapping over the top to soften it. We've got a bit of an almond shape going on and that's the shape that we want to keep. So the softest of light sweeps and a tap in motion to blend is the way forward. Each time you apply log, you go back in with your brush with whatever's left on the bristles and tap that over the top. Using my smudger brush, I'm blending out the lower lash line with a very small amount of Varis. Then I'm going back in with Log and reapplying that to that outer V shape as I really want to intensify this outer corner. It's completely up to you how much you apply, so just stop wherever you feel comfortable. I'm now taking a clean blending brush and pulling the colour from the outer corner towards the inner corner, just at the top half of the socket to make sure everything's well blended. 
taking another metallic finish this one is called Oro and this is a yellowy gold and I'm applying this with a damp brush to the inner corners of the eyes if you're not so much a fan of this intense coloured gold then you could use something like Sparks or Carver in keeping with the gold theme I'm going to use this mascara by Hourglass this is their Caution Extreme Mascara for those of you that are interested, on my nails I've got the Rimmel London 60 Second Super Shine Polish in Oh My Gold. It's not sponsored, it was gifted to me. I put it on because I thought it would go with the theme, but it actually lasted really well. I've had it on for three days and haven't got any chips. A lot of you will know that I always usually do gel polish on my nails. For lashes, I'm going to apply these ones by Huda Beauty. These are number 11, called Sasha. They really remind me of iconic lashes by House of Lashes. Also, I've done my eyebrows off camera. If you want to see the tutorial, I uploaded it last week and I will put that on screen for you now. So for my base makeup, I'm going to use this Cashmere Foundation by Burberry. Initially, this looks like it's going to be too light, but it actually oxidises and goes a bit darker. You'll see when I put the dots on, it looks like it's going to be too light. As I start to blend it, it is the perfect colour and then it gets a little bit darker, which is fine because my body is a little bit darker than my face. The problem we have with foundations that oxidise is it makes it hard to choose a colour online based on arm swatches because the arm swatches haven't oxidised. So I would say it's definitely one of the foundations that you need to go in and try on and see how it wears in terms of colour. As you can see it gives me a really beautiful coverage and it doesn't look like I'm wearing tons of makeup. It's a really beautiful foundation. I need to bring a bit of lightness back to the centre of my face so I'm going to use the Too Faced Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer and I'm applying this through the centre of the face and then I'm pressing that into the skin using my Beauty Blender. This one is not actually a Beauty Blender, it's from Huda Beauty but it's equally as good and as you can see as I'm pressing that into the skin my face is starting to look more three dimensional again, it doesn't look as flat, the foundation now blends in with the rest of my neck and chest and arms and it gives my face a bit more of a lifted appearance. To sculpt the face and add a bit more warmth, I'm going to use my favourite cream based product. This is the Soleil Tan de Chanel and as it is a cream base, I'm going to use a synthetic brush to apply it. I like to work this around where the hollows of the cheeks are and onto the cheekbone itself. I also like to work that around my hairline because the forehead naturally tapers back slightly, creating a natural shadow which we tend to lose when we have foundation that looks one tone. This also gives the face a more sun-kissed appearance, making us look healthy and glowy and like we've just come off of holiday. I use what's left on the bristles down the sides of the nose just because again it brings a bit of warmth to this area of the face, making it look a bit more cohesive. And then I swipe the rest over the area that I've applied concealer so it doesn't look too bright. To make the cheekbones a bit more prominent, I'm using the same cream based product on a fluffier brush and pressing that onto the skin in a tapping motion along my cheekbones. I'm not going too high on my cheekbones but around the hollows of the cheeks and slightly above. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of cream blush, I'm using Nudies in the Nude by Nude Sticks. This is an all over face colour and I'm using it on the apples of the cheeks and pulling the colour back slightly and then I'm going to use my finger to tap that in. As you know I'm not a massive fan of frosted highlighters or liquid highlighters, I like to have the glow come from the products such as the foundation or the cream based products that I've put onto the skin. I am oily so I only ever set the centre of my face. So I like to get that dewy appearance from cream based products. What I love about all the products I've used is that they don't have any reflective pigments in them. So although they're dewy they're not going to enhance any of my skin texture. Now I'm going to use the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Pressed Powder to set the areas that I don't want to move. For me, I'm applying a very small amount underneath my eyes, across my forehead, down the centre of my nose and a little bit on my chin because I'm oily. Now I'm taking this Chocolate Soleil Bronzer by Too Faced Cosmetics. This is a matte finish and on a cheek brush I'm applying this to the very hollows of the cheeks. I'm not bringing it down the face too far and I'm not swiping it up to the cheekbone, I'm just keeping it in this little area which just enhances the sucked in appearance to the hollows of your cheeks, helping to make the face look more sculpted. As we've got quite a smoky appearance to the eyes, we want to keep the lips really natural. So I'm using this Lip Cheek Pencil by Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Iconic Nude. I was going to use my Goldie Lips Lip Gloss by JLo because this would have gone perfect with the look, but I couldn't find it and I didn't have it to hand. So I just decided to enhance my lip line to make the lips look like there's something there rather than sinking into my face. And then to give my lips a nice sheen, I'm using my Emile Corden Cashmere On Lip Pop in number 77 Cocoa. 
I really, really love the overall finish of this look. I think it's really classy, it photos beautifully, and there are plenty of alternatives that you can use product-wise to recreate this look. I know lots of you already have the gold palette because you asked me for a tutorial and some of you are getting it for Christmas. I will list and link all the products used in the description bar below. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so, and if you'd like to follow me outside of YouTube, my social handles are on screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!